بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الأمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سي صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم So this is a kind of a special session because uh, I had the feeling that people understood or students they understood what is the relationship between the pronoun and the antecedent and how to make them agree so no one is going to use for example uh, she or uh, or it for uh, for Abdul Salam okay because we need to use a he with Abdul Salam but I had the feeling that people uh, had this problem of uh, mistaken okay uh, 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 the the subject pronouns with the object pronouns okay which we haven't studied this year because we're going to study them next year in grade five but uh, i i decided to make a video okay to make it clearer for everyone because i want you to pay attention to the difference between the subject pronouns and the object uh, pronouns i'm going to talk about the reflexive pronouns too and i'm going to talk about uh, the demonstrative pronouns too i want it to to be clear for everyone okay so for instance this video is not really for revising no it's about teaching something that you're going to meet in grade five so that's why please take advantage of the video and pay attention please okay uh so here yes okay so here as uh, as we have said before okay i'm going to work on this page maybe i'm going to use another page because i'm not going to talk about the pronoun and the antecedent agreement because everyone knows that it's too easy for example when i say ali plays <clears throat> I'm not going to use she here. I'm not going to use uh, uh, they here. I'm going to use, of course, he. It has to follow. The antecedent is what the pronoun is going to replace. It's the noun that uh, the pronoun is going to replace. So, of course, it has to follow in gender, in uh, person, and in, uh, in number. Here, of course, uh, on purpose, I have chosen she because it's not the same gender. So it's not going to agree. I have on purpose uh, chosen they because uh, it doesn't agree in number because we are talking about one person. So they is not going to work. And of course, here we are talking about the third person. Everyone knows that we are talking about the third person. So we need to use uh, he, which is uh, singular, which is uh, masculine, and uh, uh, it follows, okay, or it agrees in number and in gender. So uh, it's going to be the perfect. Uh, subject pronoun to replace Ali. Now the the problem is not with the with the subject pronoun and the object pronouns. Okay, the problem is with this sentence. And pay attention. Malik helped Tamim. Of course, everyone knows that uh, we have a verb here, which is the verb to help. What I want you to pay attention to, please, please, grade four. Always ask yourself this question. Who is the doer of the verb and who is the receiver of the verb? Of course, here we have the verb to help. Who did the action of helping and who received the action of helping? Okay, because when we're going to use the pronouns instead of using nouns here, it's going to be different. Okay, so of course, everyone knows that Malik is the one who is given help. However, Tamim is the one who is uh, receiving help. So the doer of the verb is always a subject pronoun. Always a subject pronoun. Please. We cannot say here, me help Tamim. Never. Because me is an object pronoun. Okay. Whenever you have a receiver of the action, it's going to be me. However, Malik is going to be he. He is a subject pronoun. Okay. He helped Tamim. He helped he. Look, teacher, it, it, it agrees in number, in gender, and in person. He for Tamim. Correct. But it's a subject pronoun. It's not an object pronoun. Tamim here is a receiver of the action. Okay? So the receiver of the action is going to have an object pronoun, not a subject pronoun. And the perfect object pronoun for Tamim, because he is a male, because he is singular, it's going to be him. So he helped him. What are the subject pronouns in English? I, when I am the doer of the verb. He, when he is the doer of the verb. The verb. She, when she is the doer of the verb. It, when the cat is the doer of the verb. And I'm giving an example, the cat. It can stand for many things. 
you when you are the doer of the verb and we're going to talk about you here because it's going to be the same here and here we when we are the doers of the verb and they when they are the doers of the verb however when you are a receiver of the verb and you are talking about yourself it's going to be me okay he helped me I'm the receiver of the action of being helped okay he helped him she helped her when you are talking about a girl who is receiving the help okay it is going to be it in both it's not going to change you is going to be you in both it's not going to change we it's going to be us they are helping us you see so we are receivers of the verb we're not going to say they are helping we and I have some students who are going to say they are, they are helping our no never they are helping us it's uh, an object pronoun we are we are receiving the action of being helped okay they are helping them so here I'm sorry for changing the page you see so them are receiving the action they are not the doer of uh, of the action I hope that you understood that forever another trick please what comes before the verb is always the subject it's always I he she it you we and they before the verb however me her it you it and you after the object pronouns huh? him us and them is going to be always after the verb that's another trick to decide if you're going to write something after the verb please make sure it's an object pronoun if it's going to be before the verb please make sure it's going to be a, a subject pronoun now let's move forward I'm going to write here again okay of course everyone knows what is a mirror when you look at yourself in the mirror you're going to see yourself that's what we call a reflection in English and we have what we call a reflexive pronouns I know I know that we didn't study this and we will not study this in grade 4 we're going to study it in uh, in grade 5 but pay attention to teacher please when I say I help myself it means it's obvious that I'm helping I I is helping I so it's the reflection of I as if I is looking at itself in the mirror I help I but we cannot say I help I okay I'm going to say I help myself but I stands for Malik and myself stands for Malik as if it's a reflection on the mirror he helped himself he stands for Abdul Salam and himself stands for Abdul Salam so as if he and himself as if there is a reflection of of he in the mirror because he is the same pronoun that's why we call them the reflexive pronouns she helped herself she and her her is the, the reflection of her of she in the in the mirror that's why we call it a reflexive a reflexive pronoun so she helped herself you see so in english we have seven uh, reflexive pronouns myself herself itself yourself ourselves yourself yourselves and themselves i'm sorry eight we have yourself when you are addressing one person and yourselves when you are addressing a lot of people okay finally and before ending in english we have four demonstrative pronouns that we have studied together before okay in grade 3 you have studied this okay and I'm sure that the teachers did it when you are talking about one pen which is next to you you're going to say this pen when you're going to talk about one pen which is far from you you're going to say that pen when you're going to talk about a lot of pens which are uh, next to you say these pens look 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 these pens and if the pens are far from you you're going to say those pens it's merely a revision of something that we're going to study in grade 5 but we need it thank you so much see you tomorrow love you all goodbye